This video contains minor spoilers for Angels of the Xyraman. With the Angels of the Xyraman update, we've got new evolving weapons, the Incarnate Weapons. This video, I'll focus on the primary weapon of the Fenmore. Let's explore its evolutions and see how you can get the most out of it. I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. As ever, basics first. You unlock the Fenmore by getting to rank 2 with the Holdfast and simply purchasing the blueprint. The blueprint is currently tradable with other players, so you can also get it that way, although there's no official word on if this is intentional or not. Once you have built the Fenmore, you'll need to evolve it to get the most out of it. There are five evolution stages, each connected to an easy challenge. Evolution 1 just requires you to get 100 Fenmore kills, unlocking the Incarnate Mode. Evolution 2 requires 8 Xmas kills whilst in Incarnate Mode. Evolution 3 requires 20 headshots on a Void Angel without reloading. Evolution 4 requires you to close 12 ruptures in Void Flood. And Evolution 5 requires you to do any mission with all three Incarnate weapons equipped. Like I said, they're easy. So what kind of weapon does this give you? The Fenmore is a rifle with two firing modes. The normal mode is the default, a semi-automatic rifle with high slash projectiles and noticeable travel time. While usable, far more valuable is the Incarnate mode. You charge Incarnate mode with headshots, requiring 12 headshots for a full charge. The multi-shot contributes to this, which will speed up your charge gain. Activate Incarnate mode by pressing secondary fire, transforming the weapon. The Incarnate mode has up to 408 rounds without using your ammo pool. It becomes a fully automatic bullet hose, gains 3 meters of punch through, over 4 times the fire rate, and switches damage from slash puncture to slash radiation. Unlike most automatic weapons, the Fenmore Incarnate mode has a downspalling fire rate. The longer you fire, the slower it becomes down to 60% of your max. If you take breaks between firing, this speed loss quickly clears and allows you to resume your thunderous assault. The second and third evolutions offer mostly minor or quality of life buffs. Evolution 2 has you pick between an accuracy and recoil buff, a projectile speed buff, or a 20% fire rate buff. These all stack additively with mods, offering effectively diminishing returns if you also mod for that stat. In terms of raw DPS, the fire rate is king, although I prefer the projectile speed option to make it substantially easier to land your shots. Evolution 3 offers you either increased magazine capacity, improved reload speed from empty, or a chance to instantly reload on headshot kill. The magazine buff only affects normal mode and so doesn't really offer a lot. The reload from empty buff affects the reload that triggers it, meaning you always reload faster from empty. Reload speed also affects how quickly you transition from normal to incarnate mode. However, the time that it takes to reload from empty and then transform is actually longer than just transforming without the buff. As for the headshot kill for reload options, it is chance based, but it triggers in both normal and incarnate modes. When it triggers, the effect will instantly fill up the normal modes magazine. This doesn't refill the incarnate mode, but it is still superior to the other options if you are using incarnate at all. Once your incarnate mode runs out, you should be able to use your normal mode to recharge again starting with max ammo. No reload needed, assuming you care to try and aim for headshots a bit. Now, I couldn't find any indication when this buff triggers, either visually or audibly, aside from noticing the ammo count jumped back up to max so it may be a bit hard to notice how often this buff is actually helping you. Smaller buffs aside, it's Evolutions 4 and 5 where things start to get spicy. Evolution 4 offers a choice of headshots granting 50% more incarnate charge, meaning you spend less time in normal mode, or you can go for either plus 10% critical chance and status chance, or for plus 20% status chance at the cost of 10% critical chance. These two are both absolute bonuses, meaning they're applied after all mods. Functionally for the Fenmore, they're the equivalent of either a 50-50 mod for crit chance and status chance, or a corrupted mod giving 100% status and minus 50% critical chance. But wait, before you decide to go for a crit build like with most weapons, let's look at Evolution 5. Here you get the options of a brief bonus to headshot damage if you land 2 headshots, a 100% bonus to critical damage on enemies with under 3 status effects applied to them, or a 50% chance of 2000% extra damage for shots which are not critical hits. The headshot bonus is small and sad, so let's skip that one. The critical damage bonus seems to be nice at first. 
keep the status procs down low, and you can double your critical hits, right? No. The critical damage buff is again an absolute buff, meaning your critical multiplier is only ever one times higher. The Fenmore's base is two times, so with the evolution, that would make it three times rather than four. If you modded the Fenmore with Vital Sense, your base crit damage would be 4.4 times, or 5.4 with this crit damage buff. However, the 2000% bonus damage on a non-critical hit isn't so hamstrung. This buff is multiplicative after all other bonuses have been calculated and applied. When you land a non-critical hit, half the time you'll deal 1 times damage, and half the time you'll deal 21 times damage, averaging out to 11 times your usual damage. For comparison there, with a 5.4 times critical multiplier, you would need a critical chance of over 227% to get the same average multiplier. There are ways to achieve that, like with Harrow, but nothing that will always be on. Given how strong this 2000% buff is, we can look back to Evolution 4 and quite happily take the reduced critical chance in favour of higher status chance. Effectively, we're removing half of the innate 2 times crits in favour of a buff that functions like an 11 times crit on average, on top of proccing status like Slash more often. It's a no brainer for damage output. What's more, because we're not modding for critical hits, taking up a minimum of 2 slots normally, we can spend those mod slots on other options instead. Due to the incredible direct damage output, I've put together this build here. It's a 4 former Bane build, yet you can use it against all factions without needing to change a thing. Corrosive Heat handles the Grenier, Acolytes, Deimos units all with relative ease. Because Corpus units just tend to be that much weaker, you don't even need to switch to handle with them, although if you want to, you can still switch to the Corpus Bane for that extra bonus damage. Now, there are some downsides to this weapon and setup. The initial charge requiring headshots means you'll want to be against enemies you can line up your shots against. If you're in a squad with zoom and boom players, you'll certainly struggle to get the headshots needed to get things going. The lack of crits also means that enemies with either adaptive damage resistance or just crit vulnerability will be stronger against the Fenmore than you might expect. This is part of why running corrosive is a solid idea to handle acolyte spawns. Any source of critical buff will also make this build weaker, not stronger. This means that while it can still be used, it will be weaker in the hands of Zephyr and Jaya, as well as being nerfed periodically by any Harrows on the team, or if you have a Smita Kavat, a Daza Kavat, or just forget to take off Arcane Avenger. And as you might expect with something new, there are some bugs or potentially unintended mechanics to be aware of. While many have been patched, there's still a client-side bug at the moment that allows you to gain Incarnate Charge by shooting corpses. This doesn't work if you're mission host though, so it's definitely a bug, don't rely on this one forever. Otherwise though, the Femmore is a very capable weapon, and this is the first of three videos on these Incarnate weapons, so check out this weapon video next to further build up your arsenal. And as always, evolve weapons, break heads, and fight well Tenno.